Hello and welcome to the Education Redefined webcast series, where I uncover educational best practices and share success stories with every single episode. Go ahead, grab a cup of coffee or your favorite drink and enjoy a few moments talking about teaching and learning with me. Hi, my name is Sandy Alakhanpal and I am your host for this series. Subscribe to our webcast or look out for new episodes on YouTube. Join our Facebook group for the latest trends in the field of education. We kicked off Dyslexia Awareness Month in a conversation with Jasmine Dean to celebrate dyslexia. Welcome to the second of four episodes to celebrate dyslexia. During this month, I am celebrating dyslexia by showcasing success stories of smart, young, and enterprising people who have chosen to overcome their struggles and prevailed. One of those people is Sam Mitchell. Sam is a force to reckon with. In this episode, I speak with Sam, who in a lot of ways inspired me to start a series on dyslexia. Sam is an avid podcaster and the host of Autism Rocks and Rolls. The mission behind his podcast is to take the stigma out of disability. His motto in life is, no matter your disability, you can break through and change the world one person at a time. Similar to students with dyslexia, Sam faced challenges at school. However, instead of being defeated by those challenges, he chose to turn his talents into opportunities. He first became interested in podcasting with the high school media club. Sam supported the school's podcast and then transitioned into autism rocks and rolls. He has recently graduated high school and is looking to further his studies in media and entrepreneurship. He has been running his own podcast, Autism Rocks and Rolls, for about two years at this time. You can find a link to Sam's website in the show notes. I want to take this episode and this moment to thank Sam and Gina Mitchell for giving me the inspiration to start a series on dyslexia and for helping spread the message and strength to go on despite the pitfalls. Please take a moment to visit his website, support his mission, and listen to Autism Rocks and Rolls. In this episode, he talks about the challenges at school and how he navigated those challenges. Listen as he talks about turning disability into opportunity. I would like to reiterate Sam's message. No matter the challenge or disability, keep going on and pushing through. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Sam Mitchell. Hi, Sam. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Education Redefined. I appreciate you taking the time to speak with me this afternoon. Of course. Happy to be here. All right. So first of all, Sam, congratulations on graduating from high school and, um, you know, on, on your successful uh, almost two year anniversary of um, Autism Rocks and Rolls. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your your experience with school and how how this whole journey with podcasting started. So for today, let's talk about school. Um, tell me how how was school for you in general and how did you kind of navigate towards podcasting and how did this whole success story come to be? Yeah, so well, well, I, I go to a school in um, Bloomfield. That's all I'll say about it. So had, it depends on how you mean. Do you mean, are you asking if it was good academically or socially? Um, were there any challenges at school? Talk to me about the challenges and, and you know, how you kind of navigated through those challenges. Where did okay. you find your strength? Let me start off. Well, first of all, let me start off saying, as far as academic wise, it was great. I've, I always say that with special needs, the school I went to, that's the best school I would recommend anyway. Like if they say, what school would you go to for special needs? I tell them, go to my school that I went to. So that, and cause they have amazing staff and amazing teachers, amazing special education program. I would highly recommend to go there. Awesome. But to answer your question about challenges, socially it's a challenge because of the overwhelming amount of people not, not fitting in well, struggling with conversations, the flow of it. 
not really, not really like, not talking about what others are talking about, but talking about stuff that aren't really interesting to me. Right. So did you have to explain to some of your friends or the people that you were conversing with that, hey, this is not, this is not something that's of interest to me, you know, and, and kind of navigate the conversation towards, let's talk about something that's of mutual interest. No, because then I sound like a complete jerk. I like how authentic you are. <laughs> tell me about um, tell me about working with teachers. Uh, were there times when you found things challenging in the classroom, and um, and what are some of the things that the teachers did to support you, or were there ways in which you had to explain to them, say, "Hey, this doesn't work for me, but this would." Yeah, I'm, I'm completely honest. I always tell a teacher, like, straight up, you know, like, I'm telling you right now, mm -hmm. I don't understand this. There's a highly likely chance I'll fail this part. I'm not saying it's because of you. It's just me, 100%. So don't get, take that personal. But there have been some really good math teachers that have helped me understand math really well. I'm not, not a big math guy. Never ever really have been. Uh -huh. I'm still an ink. I'm the I got my mom's brain because she's a teacher at our school. She teaches eighth grade English. So I got the English and social studies brain. <laughs> I, I like the way you say that. I'm, I don't have a math brain either. Um, I'm, I gravitate towards reading and writing myself. So I think we all have our strengths and weaknesses. Um, tell me about how did you get interested in podcasting? Sure. So I really did it after I found my high school's media club, which is we run our own podcast called Thundercast. Okay. Like not just me, it's there are other people who do it. And after that, because I decided that I want to do something with podcasts, I didn't really want to just like, you know, just do Thundercast. I thought maybe we could do something else. Mm -hmm. and at the time, I didn't know what it was. Like, I didn't know, like, could we, and I like, could we do this? Could we do this? And I just thought, okay, this isn't realistic. So the only idea I thought of with was starting a pod podcast. And because of my determination, I said, hey, mom, I'm starting a podcast, period. And she wasn't for sure. She had to go through the procedures, but it did happen, thankfully. And I'm, I'm glad it did. And I got to go on this two-year journey or still journey. But I'm, let me warn you, if I would have gotten it all myself because of my determination. That's good. That's good. Um, so what's the mission? Tell me a little bit about, so the name of your podcast is Autism Rocks and Rolls. Tell me a little bit about, the mission behind autism rocks and rolls. Okay. It's a show the, it's a show to take the, well, at first it kind of changed the first time that we had like a big orange logo. Mm -hmm. And that time it was just to help people. Cause that was my mission. I like my English brains like, Hey Sam, what's your purpose? And I said, I didn't know what it was. Cause I thought about entertaining, but I thought, no, I didn't want to do comedy. I didn't want to do politics. I didn't want to get into religion. I, I didn't know. So then I thought, you know, I want to help. I think helping would be a good idea. Because I think where we're at this time frame and we have the world's coming, people need some help. So that's when I decided to start Autism Rocks and Rolls. And it was then to help, but now it's changed and progressed and to gain the negative stigma off of autism to show that I'm not broken and I don't need to be fixed. I have nothing, I don't need any, like, there's no cure for autism, in my opinion. I think it should stay that way. It doesn't need to be a cure. There's no point. Right. Um, why do you think people misunderstand autism so much? I mean, why do you think they feel the need to fix somebody with autism? Well, I'm, this is going to sound kind of funny, but ironically, we're part of the problem. It's the media. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. The podcasting being part of that group. Yes. Yes. Um, so tell me, what, what have you been able to do through your show to take some of that stigma and that struggle for, you know, basically the stereotypical approach that people have towards people with autism? How, what have you been able to achieve or work towards to get rid of that stigma? Well, I've first been able to public speak a little bit. That's always been really nice. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't done it much, but I've done a couple. Then I've gotten sponsors, which kind of made into a business, which will thank Wellspring Pain Solutions in Bloomington, Indiana. And then a tattoo parlor is probably our biggest surprise one. 
in Bloomington, Indiana as well. But there are others that will, there are more to it. But I think what I got to do is talk to these amazing people like Miss Temple Grandin, who's probably the biggest autistic advocate in the world. I'm talking to Sarah Tomko, who is a big mental health advocate, who starred in the shows um, Resident Alien and Ex- Amazon Sneaky Pete. And then I've talked to family members. I talked to my Taekwondo instructors. And then I've talked to my favorite guest, James Durbin. He's the fourth runner up of the 2011 American Idol season. He has autism, but has Tourette's, but he's also got to be a father. Good, good, awesome. Um, have, have you had times when people have just walked up to you and said, Hey, you know, this is what I thought it would be like to interact with somebody who had autism, but, but the experience has been completely different. Oh, um, no, but I, I don't think I, hmm, I don't think so. Like they haven't told me that, but I can just tell based on body language. Okay. And, And so have you seen people tend to warm up? to you now more than what they would have done had they not had the chance to interact with someone with autism? Depends on the person. That's all I'm going to say. Probably depends on which person you're talking about. Right. Um, but I, you know, you have this amazing mission of taking this whole stigma out of, out of autism. Um, have, how have you been able to help families with children who have autism um, through your show? Talk about my experiences and give them advice. Probably that's the best thing you can do. I need advice every day. So if you need advice every day, might as well give some every day. Awesome. And what, what do you, what do you do to um, motivate your listeners on your show? Um, Be myself really. Cause I don't think people are really good at that these days. Um, but also spread just wisdom of words and stuff to think about. That's good. That's good. Um, what has been the best or the most favorite part about podcast podcasting? Um, not a lot of podcasters love this. I, I don't know if you will, but I love the editing. You do? Yeah, I enjoy it too. Um, I like the, the technical aspect. I get to play with the tools, so um, I enjoy not it. Not a lot well. of people do. You'd be very surprised about that. Really? Yeah, I'm. I'm one of the. Uh, we're one of the rares who likes the edit, editing. That's, that's Our podcasts good. are like, man, this sucks. <laughs> I I think part of the reason is that that that's my job. That's what I do for a living all day, every day. I work with technology and tools, and and um, so I enjoy it. I like playing with tools. Um, tell me about now that school is over. What's what's next on the horizon for you? I'm gonna go to. Will we actually fun thing that we schedule our my college classes today for Ivy tech, okay. which is in Bloomington, Indiana. And then I'm going to transfer to Vincennes, which is an hour from here okay. for either this tourism or entrepreneurship. Awesome. Um, and, and what are you looking to specialize in? Like, okay, so are you going to do entrepreneurship in the podcasting media and entertainment? Like where do you want to go with this? I, I can't give you that answer. I'm going to have to just go in and see, honestly. Are you looking forward to, to college? We'll see. Right now with the scheduling today, well, I'm telling you right now, scheduling today was a pain. I about, Really? Yeah, I was too overwhelmed. I was like, um, what are we taking the first semester? What's the deal? Right. Um, you think that uh, that colleges can do a, a better job of breaking the steps down one thing at a time? I mean, what what from your perspective, I would like to hear that. Like, I mean, it's overwhelming for any kid. Right. When you go there, there's just, it's such a big institution. So much gets thrown at you. But do you think colleges can do a better job of breaking it down for people who are new to this whole college community thing and courses and all of that stuff? Ask me after college and then we'll talk again. <laughs> I would love to have you come back on, on my show. Um, talk to me about um, some of the challenges where. So you know how you talk talk to your teachers. How did you learn to advocate for yourself in high school? I mean, it, it's hard for people, you know, it, in, in middle school and high school, it's kind of challenging. A lot of people kind of retreat and become reclusive. Like, how did you learn to advocate and stand up for what you needed in class or outside of class in school? Probably family. Probably just family as a whole probably told me. 
but myself, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I made my own decisions pretty much in school based on what's right, and what's not right. So. And how was it, how was it received on the other end when you, when you push back or you said no to something, um, was it received well or were people surprised by your reaction? Uh, sometime, not really surprised, but probably, but probably some were better than others. Some were probably worse than others. So we'll just, that's a good question. I can't think of a story to tell you on that. Um, tell me about, uh, one of your podcasting shows. Um, one of your favorite ones, a guest speaker that you worked with. Uh, Oh, I don't do all interviews. I also do some on behaviors and just some entertainment ones. Okay. So probably one of my favorites is probably the it's called 1115 conversation operation. Okay. And it was about com- conversing, how we tend to converse and why it's sometimes hard to enter and exit a conversation. Okay. And what were some of the tips that you gave your audience? Encourage social interaction from others was one of them, definitely. Okay. Um, this is kind of, sound kind of corny, but I thought about role playing, like how to act in this scenario, how to act in a funeral, how to act in a restaurant, hotel. That's nice. That's and then, nice. which I, and then find a hobby, and then enjoy talking while you're doing that hobby because I have a tendency to think that. People on the spectrum who are doing something they love will talk to you about that, and they it's like it switches off. It's like for some reason the autism kind of like switches off is the best mm-hmm. way to word it. Did you get any any uh, teenagers who who used some of that tips? It resonated with some some of your audience. Did anyone reach out to you? I think it's mainly here. Some local people. I, I don't know if I gain likability. I can't get an answer. You have to ask them. I think I've gained some respect from it. That's good. That's good. Um, do you think you're doing a, uh, you're, you're achieving some ground in changing the mindset of, of people towards autism? I think so. I would like to hope, hope hopefully I am. That's good. That's good. Um, you've helped a lot of other people along in your podcasting journey. You've, you've had a lot of guests. Can you talk to me a little bit about someone you, you were able to help, like another cause or another person through your podcast? Sponsors, they help, they help me, but I help them too. I advertise for them. That's good. That's good. So you're, 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 you're helping their cause as much yeah. as they are helping yours, which, yeah, which is a good thing. Yep, I got yep. like, like pals it's an animal service learning it's the coolest place it's pals it's called people animal learning service you okay. basically learn through a horse and uh-huh. i in, in our bloomington we also got a tax service an auto glass i got a chocolate shop too so awesome. that's really cool and a hospital oh that's cool that's cool um so what are you what are you doing this summer um as you prep for college so for this summer, I'm doing podcasting. Okay. Hey, I work on hay farm with my father. And then I'm going to start working, I think, soon. I can't give, remember the exact date, but in the mornings, I'm going to work at a humane shelter. Not like a humane shelter, but from a family friend. Okay. A humane shelter, sort okay. of. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have any word of advice for people who have never worked with anyone with autism? Like, how should they approach someone putting that mindset or stereotypical image that they have aside, what can, what, what can they do to make conversations easier with somebody who has autism? Give us the opportunity. You think a lot of people just shut, shut you out just because of that label? Yes, ma'am. That that's hard. That's gotta be hard. Here's the deal. You get used to at the point that where you don't give up anymore. Right. Because I don't feel the difference when I'm speaking with you. All right. Um, Sam, uh, thank you so much for coming on my show. I am looking forward to um, following your journey in college and what you do with your entrepreneurship and your podcasting. Um, I appreciate you taking the time today. Of course. Thank you for listening to this episode of Education Redefined. We welcome feedback. Join our Facebook group, 
to leave a comment or a question. We look forward to hearing from you. Until then, stay tuned for our next episode.